Marquette, Kansas. Great game. We got some great games today. Uh, we were already doing Purdue, Tennessee. Very excited for that. Is this one more exciting than Purdue, Tennessee to you? Like, this is a pretty great game. Yeah, it honestly is. Just because you got, you know, you got Kolick, you got Dewan Harris, you got Oso, you got Hunter. Um, you know, you got the other, you got the wings for Marquette, you got McCuller. I, I just think it's going to be a really, really good game. Um, I believe the line on it is Marquette plus four and a half. I'm telling everyone in the world right now, there's no way that I stay away from that. I will be on that. Uh, it is, is what it is. There also might be a money line sprinkle, but I think it's going to be a really good game. Um, I'm excited to see it. It's going to be high level uh, and credit to Maui. Cause I think this is what they envision when they put all these teams in like their semifinal right now is number seven, Tennessee, number two, Purdue, number one, Kansas and number four, Marquette. Yeah, I, I want to give the four monsters some credit because I came on here 26 hours ago and said uh, somebody's going to lose. I didn't know who it would be, but of the four, somebody's going to lose. I, 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 okay, also credit to you. UCLA Loki had that game won until they played here you go defense on one of the Marquette players, the little Sean Jones, and backed up like he was Rondo when he's a career like 30% three-point shooter. Yeah. Uh, so you almost had that one. Yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of right read wrong results for me in the last couple of weeks. But uh, I do like honestly, even like Syracuse had Tennessee on the ropes for a while without Judah Mintz even in the floor, and then Tennessee just like stormed back and was like, "No, we're nasty." Uh, it felt like that kind of happened with Marquette as well, where they were getting outplayed the whole game by UCLA, and then they just took it back because that's what great teams do. The bottom line is, there's four great teams in this tournament, and. Uh, that's no disrespect to UCLA and Gonzaga, who we know are very good teams. But there's four great teams in this tournament. Like, Purdue is a great team. Marquette is a great team. Kansas is a great team. And uh, it just it, – this it is such a treat for college basketball fans everywhere right now. Um, so looking ahead to this game, you went through names, and the fourth name that you said is Hunter Dickinson. I thought he'd be the first name that you would say in this game. I just went like Matt. I I went I went from small to large. You know, I went point guard matchup first, and I worked my way down. Do you think that's where this game starts, though? Do you think it comes down to who wins the point guard battle, or do you think this comes down to like can anybody hang with Hunter? Because I don't think Oso can hang with Hunter. I think Oso can hang with Hunter. Ooh, okay. I think I flipped I flipped on my Oso narrative a little bit. Oso can Oso can hang with any big in the country. I think outside of like out, okay well obviously he's not going to shut down other bigs but i got faith that Oso can hang with any big in the country defensively okay. all right um that'll be interesting to especially, watch especially because you also got to flip it hunter's got to check Oso on the other side and also just so he's so quick like he does like the fake handoffs the back doors the screen and rolls he's able to use his quickness to go baseline and or go to the middle and then explode to the rim so he also makes the other big work on the other end. So Hunter's Hunter's gonna have his work cut out for him trying to guard Oso. Yeah, Oso's just good. Is what it is. I have no uh no qualms about saying that at this point. Uh, we should do the point guard thing. Dewan Harris and Tyler Kolick, two guys that have a uh, a stake in the game for best point guard in the country. Also, two guys you have loudly criticized through the years. Also, two guys that I think leave us collectively wanting more, more often than not. We just talked about how we want more from Kolick, and uh, I personally would just love it if Dewan Harris decided to shoot the ball some games. I'd love to see that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, this is going to be a matchup of two point guards who are going to see how cool they can be and how non-aggressive they can be and still win the game. <laughs> are they going to have a little like like they were at the luau last night like everybody celebrating got a cocktail and these guys are in the corner dapping up like let's see if we can win without shooting <laughs> yeah let's 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 see what let's see what five five and four will win this game huh <laughs> like <laughs> that's really what it might be i want to do... harris to average 10 shots a game so bad so the I think both these guys are big game guys, though. I'll say that. Like, I, I think both these guys get up for big games. I think both these guys get up for, like, a point guard challenge. You're looking at me sideways like Kolick's not a big game guy. A healthy healthy Kolick is. Dewan Harris is a big game guy. We can say that, yeah. right? Dewan, yeah. Dewan Harris mm -hmm. is a big game guy. 
Tyler Kolick, mm-hmm. we're not so sure. We need to know that he's healthy. I wouldn't I, – I'm not putting Tyler Kolick in the big game guy category, no. Is Tyler Kolick healthy right now? Uh, I, I think he might be hampered, but I also that also might just be making excuses for him. Can you ask me that same question real quick? Is Tyler Kolick hurt? I'll answer that if they win or lose this game. I'm convinced that's that's what's going on with Tyler Kolick. Tyler Kolick is hurt when they lose a game. Tyler Kolick is healthy when they win a game. That's that's where I'm at with this team right now. <laughs> Um, which I, is not meant as like massively disrespectful. I'm saying that in jest, like he may be 90% instead of a hundred percent, but he looked fantastic in champagne. And I thought he looked full go against, uh, UCLA. Like, I just, I don't think there's like a massive injury going on here. I think he looks fully capable of doing everything that he does. And yeah, I'm sure if they lose this game and Kolek's bad, it will be a part of the narrative for sure. That Kolek's not hundred percent. If they win this game, we will not discuss it whatsoever. That's what's going on here with his injury situation. Um, in your heart of hearts, just <laughs> gun to your head again. <laughs> I don't know why I keep liking that term with you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who's the better point guard just pure not like tonight not match up. just it pure who is the better point guard dewan harris or tyler Kolick? so the answer should be tyler Kolick. i think it's dewan harris though whoa talk me through that because I just think that Dewan Hare, I mean, both these point guards do what needs to be done, right? Like they know what their team needs. They do what the team needs to do. They're the epitome of what you want from your point guard if you're a coach or a team. I agree with that. Dewan Harris probably is slightly better than Kolick on defense. Kolick's no slouch defensively, but Dewan Harris is one of the best defensive point guards in the country. Dewan Harris can do Honestly, everything that Kolek can do, and and I don't think it's really Kolek doing it better, or Kolek is clear better at things that Dwan Harris can do. It's just the fact that Dwan Harris doesn't do it all the time, which irks me. But one game, I need to win this basketball game, and I need my point guard to play a certain way. Like, I think I'm picking Dwan Harris. Yeah, it's interesting, because I think, I think Kolek has been the better player pretty clearly resume wise throughout his career. And, and and I wouldn't bet and I wouldn't honestly bat an eye at you or anybody else who pick and call. Like I honestly might come yeah. around to somewhat agree with you, but it's something it's something in me. My my intuition tells me that yeah. I'd pick Dewan Harris. Yeah, re- resume wise I think Kolik like has achieved more and has just personal accomplishment ahead of Dewan Harris. Uh but I'm with you for whatever reason if this was like, who am I willing to go to war with? Who do I want to be in a battle with? Who do I want to look to my right and say that's my point guard with in a dogfight game with my season on the line? It's Dewan Harris. And I can't I can't even really put quantification behind that. I just <laughs> I, I've seen it at the Champions Classic where like the game got dicey. Dewan Harris said three pointer, three pointer, game over. Like I don't know. There's something about the kid that just feels tough and feels like I know he's there for the big moment. And I don't think I can say the same for Tyler Kolick at this point. Um, and also, if we're being completely honest, like Tyler Kolick's vibes coming into the season weren't my favorite. <laughs> why? Why so? He just he had some of the like, you know, he wanted to be like Instagram tough boy, right? Like he he was trying to be like the villain of college basketball when like. It's like, my guy, you got packed up by AJ Hogard. That's that's how your season ended. That's a tough look. It's really tough. That's not happening to Dewan Harris ever. I don't care how hurt Dewan Harris is. It's not happening. <laughs> facts. That's big so, facts. Yeah. Um, Bill Self Shaka Smart. Does that matter in this game? Uh, wait. Let me check. November. No. <laughs> But it's Phil Self, man. Like I Phil's that good in all settings, right? It's it's a great it's a great coach matchup. Can I do I mean, a quick it's, adva- it's advantage it's advantage self if that's what you're asking me? Can I do a quick like hypothesis prediction here? Please. I think Kansas has been on cruise control a little bit early in this season, right? 
Um, they, they've been able to basically out talent all their opponents. I don't think they've given an A or even a B performance in weeks. Uh, it, Kentucky, they trail the team. They shouldn't be trailing. Kentucky just basically lost to St. Joe's, right? That, that was a bad result that Kansas was down 10 to Kentucky for most of that game. Uh, then they come back like, no offense, but like they were 42 point favorites against Shamanad. That was like a 15 point game for much of the game. They were just on cruise control. Like my read on Kansas right now is that Kevin McCullers out to get his numbers. Hunter Dickinson's out to get his numbers. Dewan Harris is out to make sure that Kevin McCullers and Hunter Dickinson get their numbers and everybody else is just happy to be there. That's my read on the Jayhawks. Marquette is complete and they're tough. Like they, they got dudes who know their roles. They're going to show up for the fight. If you hit them in the mouth in the first four minutes, they're going to hit you back for the next 36. We just saw that with UCLA. And I don't know that I think Kansas is ready for that. I think like this could be a game to me where it starts to go south for Kansas and Bill Self sees the bigger picture and uses this as a teaching moment. That's one of my reads on this. Like so, you're you're talking about like at the 16, no, at the 12 minute mark, he's had enough. He benches Dewan Harris, he benches McCuller, he bench, and like we're getting Parker Braun, uh, McDowell, Timberlake lineups basically. I and just Perfie. call it pure crystal ball, and it would need to like be like Marquette's beating them handily for this to happen. But I just I think there's a decent possibility that Marquette is just outplaying Kansas in this game collectively. And Bill Self gets very frustrated with what he's seeing from Hunter Dickinson and Kevin McCuller. And say with say what you will about that. Maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe Kansas just wins this game. They certainly could win this game. They might be the best team in the country. But like, I, I think it's been so easy for those two guys right now that they've been winning and doing well individually with some bad habits mixed in. And now they're going to play a team that you can't get away with bad habits against. And if it goes south, I do think Bill South's going to see the bigger picture and be like, this is unacceptable. Like, get get this shit out of the court for me right now, you know? Yeah. There, there's a world, and I this is me making a, a vision or foreseeing something. Marquette gets up early, like up early, up double-digit points for most of the game. Early, maybe late. No, sorry, not early. Late in the second half, they cut it to five. They cut it to seven. They're feeling good. Crowd's excited. Shaka's getting a timeout. Marquette comes out of that timeout, pushes it right back up to like 10, 12, 10, 12 range. And like they win this game by double digits. Yeah. I, I, I think that's where my gut is at on this game, as crazy as that sounds. I'm going to take Marquette to cover. I'm going to take Marquette to win on the money line. And we'll see if I'm right or wrong. If I'm wrong, it's time for me to look the camera in the eyes and just admit that Kansas is untouchably good. For some reason, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think I'm wrong. I don't think I'm wrong. We'll see about this. All right. Good luck, Kansas. Good luck, uh, Marquette. Two great teams. Two top five teams in the country. We'll see who wins.